for far too long. We've been told what to do, what to think, how to be. No more. The old paradigm is crumbling, falling all around us. Burn it all. It's my mission to bring you back to your natural state of luxury, to lead you to an empowered place with energetic intention. Luxury is a personal, expansive experience, one that's been kept from you, hidden away, a soul experience broken into a million pieces. Luxuriously fierce is for those who know there's more, who desire more, even if you don't know what more is. It's for those who are ready to burn old paradigms to the ground and walk through the flames to the other side. For those who are ready to be bold in their being, fierce in their feminine. Luxuriously Fierce is not just a brand, it's a movement. It's not something I do, it's something I am. Together, we are setting fire to the old and forging a new path. A new world. One where openness and truth are the norm. Where changing the world begins with healing yourself. If you're here on this earth, in this lifetime, to light a fire and burn everything you believe to be true to the ground, Welcome to my world. Burn it all and watch the ashes fly. Welcome back to the Luxuriously Fierce podcast. I am so excited to be sitting down with Victoria Jade. Victoria is the head coach and creatrix of Womb to Wisdom, a high-touch coaching journey to intuitive birth and empowered motherhood for pregnant women. She started as a yoga teacher and after her first baby, she became a birth and postpartum doula. After seeing the disconnect in maternal care and holistic well-being in total health, she decided to trailblaze in a new direction altogether, weaving modern science and ancient wisdom together to bring an in-depth, informed, and instinctual experience to expectant mothers that crave deeper meaning and higher quality care. Her ultimate vision is to guide and nourish strong mothers with abilities and confidence to raise emotionally intelligent, heart-centered, and connected children to redirect our societies toward a more positive well-being for future generations and remember our innate wisdom, our initiations, and rites of passage, and the power of sacred sisterhood. I love all of that, like all of it so much, and I love that you put the word trailblazer in there, trailblaze a new direction, because there's we were just saying this, there's nobody in this space. There's nobody in this online space who's doing this kind of work. And it's so powerful and so important. Thank you. Yeah, that was something that that word was brought to me a couple of years ago before I really knew where I was going. And when I was working with a brand designer, I kind of went with a big, like a big brand design package and was like, I don't know where we're going, but we're doing it big. <laughs> And then that word kept coming up and I was like, oh, I can't like, that's not, I can't associate with that. I can't just like call myself that. But along the journey, I have definitely been able to step into that and give myself permission and see it for what it is. So yeah, I can't say that I'm completely 100% on my own. I definitely have a lot of like mentors and inspirations and role models in this field. But yeah, as far as just the the motherhood empowerment coaching mixed with the birth work, I'm not seeing anything like that yet, but I hope that it's coming more because I'm definitely in a collaboration over competition vibe with this one. We need lots more of this work. Absolutely. I agree like a million billion percent. <laughs> We're higher than a hundred. Um, <laughs> one thing that just like came through for me is and then I'm gonna ask you to introduce yourself because I haven't done that yet we just dove right in <laughs> well that was a long that was a big bio that was, it was. I have a long bio but with the word trailblazer one thing that I've been having a lot of conversations around lately just like in my in my friend group and in my social circle is this idea that at certain points of our lives 
and in sort of momentous times and in pivots, your higher, your next level self or the future version of you speaks to the what is at the time the present version of you. And so when you said that you at first didn't really identify with the word trailblazer and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know if that's me. But to me, it feels like this version of you, this at the time, what was the future yeah. version of you was like, no, you're a trailblazer. Start doing this, you know, identifying with this now. And so like that future version of you was bringing present you into alignment with the you that is now. Is that, yeah, <laughs> this, like that. this makes sense in my head when I, when I'm thinking about <laughs> it, but when you say like there's present future but, and it gets confusing, but. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about like quantum physics per se, but I get like certain concepts and it definitely sounds along those lines of like the possibilities, you know, that exist in our universe that that one could actually kind of go back in that way and be like, we're bringing you in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It yes. Does. I mean, it, de it definitely feels aligned when you say that. Like, yes, if it was definitely couldn't have been anyone but me that that reached back and pulled me in this direction because it's been blind faith the whole way just like so many like oh I should quit oh this doesn't make sense oh you know just defying logic I have two babies I'm in the middle of birthing I'm like you know it was just a lot of yeah very interesting work atmospheres over the last few years but it's now feeling like it's in a place where it's like okay wow that was a lot of that was a lot of mud and here's a little bit of like a lotus bud and <laughs> this is exactly why we're meant to be here <laughs> yeah all those things that don't make sense and I always say that the best things don't make sense yeah yeah because I you agree. like that that version of you that is we think about it too much and when you're thinking about it your your logical mind like your conscious mind is trying to not make sense of it right trying to keep you where you are but mm -hmm. those things always turn out to be the best honestly like everything <laughs> almost everything in my life I can bring back to a birth analogy of some sort <laughs> like you just saying that like you you can't think your way through birth or like anything like 2020 and like well in America the elections like COVID, all of these things, it was, it was very much like a, like a, what is it? The ring of fire, like the crowning. And, and so like when I'm going through these like tough moments in business or like in motherhood, it's, it's like an initiation, you know? And so like, when you say that it's, it's like, okay, let's, we're bringing this back to birth again. Cause you can't think your way through it. You have to just literally like surrender and just jump into that shit and go with it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to feel your way out of it. <laughs> what I really like it about it. is I I don't have kids, so you know, pregnancy and birthing is not something that I have experienced. Mm. But I can imagine, but also like not really imagine because I've never actually done it myself. Just that whole experience, mm -hmm. and I like to think that if I ever had kids, that I would be, you know, surrendering, and like, let go and let my body do its thing and, and be like really connected in those moments. But I also think that my logical brain would just be like, nope. <laughs> like you can't think your way through it. And even when we're talking about birthing, as women, we birth everything that we create. And that is also things that we create in this world not necessarily children mm. but any sort of creativity is like a birthing thing yeah. right it comes from your sacral chakra yeah creation mode mm -hmm. and you can't think your way into creativity yeah it's like if you have created a business or you have created any sort of project or been in any state of flow or had a human experience, you can still identify with birth energy because it is a human experience and it's our birthright. And there's a blueprint, there's a birthing blueprint inside of people with wounds. Like there, and, and even 
you could go you could go further and say more about that but like as far as just knowing like as a woman how to birth and like be able to get into that zone I'll just say this with my work what I do is help rewrite codes and stories and getting into the subconscious because there's been a lot of programming against trusting our bodies Mm -hmm. starting from like even just taking a pee test like okay you're literally taking yourself out of your body and relying on outside sources to give you validation of your experience taking you away from your intuition so when it comes to a woman becoming pregnant I I use I'm gonna use the word woman work that I do is not just for like accountability and support but with learning to trust yourself fully and that goes with birth and postpartum and motherhood Mm -hmm. so being able to like tap back into your body and and a lot of and you could just say like get back into your body and here's some tools to get back into your body and here's this experience oh this is what it feels like to actually be in your body and to actually be able to listen to your inner wisdom and the messages that your body is sending you but how does that keep you like when you're when you're going about daily life and back into the hustle and back into the busyness like how do you stay in that place how do you remember how to come back to that place so that's why my container that I work in is long format I work with people with women for four months so that it can be like pregnancy as a living prayer is what we call it like multiple times a day of checking in and then like building that habit in your brain like actually wiring your brain like for coming back to yourself as a prayer like over the course of your pregnancy in your birth experience in your postpartum and then when you're a mom you're like whoa from maiden to mother this archetypal huge transition Mm -hmm. being able to be like oh I've got this like I so many outside opinions and biases and projections and mom blogs and just overwhelm information and decision fatigue but you've got this because you know yourself so it's like okay let's take the modern science that saves lives let's do that let's absolutely use it when we need to and then let's recognize when we don't need it and when it's going to cause more harm than good and then join them together I love that so much And even, I mean, a lot of like what I do is a lot of like empowerment and writing your own story and which is like setting boundaries and connecting with your intuition, which I call your capital S self, Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just that coming back to that connection with yourself and trusting yourself. And even when I, this gives me a little bit of imposter syndrome, just like straight up honesty because I I don't have kids I don't even really want kids I you know I've never had this this physical experience of like pregnancy and birthing right but even when I see people projecting old stories onto like my sister has a child I have a niece or my friends are having kids right even when I see people in those situations where someone's like well you should do this and you should do that and this is how you raise your kid and this is what you need to do during pregnancy and you know all of that bullshit I'm just like, can you shut the fuck up? Let me just the nose. She knows, right? And I'm just, I can't, I can't imagine actually living it. Yeah. Because I know how upset and like how angry I get when I see somebody else in that situation. Somebody else being told like what to do with their body and how, how to be in their body and, and just all of it. Yeah that being like actually being in that situation like the even the thought of it just like makes my blood boil but I am like I'm so excited to be having this conversation this is not a conversation I've ever had on this podcast ever it's cool (laughs) this is like a whole new a whole new door opening right here and I love it you're trailblazing in in the luxuriously fierce podcast what (laughs) I love that yeah yeah well that's that's yeah can you think were you gonna say something else well I was just gonna ask him to talk a little bit more about like that disconnect and just all the things like I I honestly feel normally when I have someone on the podcast you know it's it's a conversation that I'm 
familiar with or have lived experience in, right? But this is not it. And so I'm feeling, I'm feeling almost like disconnected from this conversation, not in a bad way, but in a way that I, I know is going to be really expansive. So yeah, I just, I would love to know a little bit more about that, that disconnect between like right. maternal care and holistic well being. And I've had it on, like you said, there's, there's so much greatness in modern science and like modern healthcare, right? Like we can literally save lives, but also with this push in modern science and healthcare and, and all of that, we've become really disconnected from ourselves. And like, how, how do you begin to shut that down almost Mm. to weave the two together and make them one? Yeah. I find that the best place to start is with the beginning. And as far as far back as like, I, I know to start with. Mm -hmm. Um, And story medicine being the kind of center of the spider web, if you will, like everything is very much woven together. But if we just start like at the very middle and work our way out. I can't answer all of the questions yet, nor will I ever be able to. Mm-hmm. I'm not a history buff and I don't like to to memorize a whole lot of facts <laughs> or scientific evidence. But I I will give you what I have been able to briefly summarize for myself and others that has been helpful in sort of understanding where we came from, where we are, and where we can go. So With that being said, there was a time in our ancient history where we had the red tent. And a lot of women who work in womb work and shadow work in women's circles, sisterhood, recognize red tents. But for those that don't know what that is, it was like pre-biblical times. We lived in tribes. Pre-biblical times. So we had these... I'm not sure. Maybe they were red. I don't know. Maybe they were not red, but they, but that's what we think that they were called. And the women gathered and it was very auspicious and very potent medicine for the tribes to as for survival and for knowing where they were and where they were going to have the medicine of the women, to have women coming together in circle and sharing in sisterhood passing down wisdom through the generations with story medicine. They weren't writing books. They weren't speaking on podcasts. Like they were literally just talking to each other and sharing their stories of their lived experiences and witnessing each other in their lived experiences. This always gives me chills when I talk about this. I, I love it. <laughs> well, this is what I like. Oh, like it does the same thing in your body. It's just yeah. like your body like knows something about this huh? you know, on a cellular level, when you talk about it, it almost like when I, when I've talked to other women about this, it always like does that. It brings back so, those goosebumps, mm-hmm. that feeling of just sharing. And I, yeah. that's what I do. Like my, my whole thing is storytelling, yeah. right? Sharing that is the medicine. your story. And that is the medicine. Yes. yes. So that, so there's like a little, a little like peak of where we're going. So You know, women sharing story medicine and sisterhood has been around since there was multiple women and and bleeding together and having those sensory experiences of like actually taking part in your cycle of the blood that's coming out of you, of witnessing that in yourself and your sisters in witnessing death and taking part in that and not just like wiping it away and pretending it didn't happen and putting it in a box and burying it like there you know I mean I get I get ceremony and ritual that's another topic but just like having a more like okay where's the sight where's the touch where's the sound because this is our life our living experiences we we experience through our senses so so creation mode within tribes is is also that way is also lived through your sensory experience and then because of the intuition that we're able to tap into becoming so much more powerful when women gather and especially when women gather to bleed together 
because we are deeply connected and tapped into our intuition during that time of the month, during those two to three days, they did, they weren't visited by men. They didn't go outside the tent. They lived together. And it was like, you don't go mess with the women. You don't talk to them. They lead in there together. Like that's where our, that's where our knowledge comes from. That's where our wisdom comes from. Like this is a sacred, sacred time every single time per month, no matter how they were treated when they were outside of the tents, as long as they were, you know, inside of the tents. There's a book that I love called, I think it's called The Red Tent. <laughs> Actually, I'll have to, I'll have to look it, look it up and maybe you can put it in the show notes or something. But that one's one of my favorites for this topic. It's fiction, but it's very, very like it, it you know, leads a good picture into what this actually looked like. So all that to be said, you know, all over the world, tribes, villages, communities did this in different ways, but it was also, they birthed there. Like they watched birth. There were certain women who were the midwives. There were certain women who were support roles. The, you, you always had kids with you in, in birth, like to watch the experience, to be a part of it. And that's not just the story medicine of telling stories, but the actual like sensory experience of being there as a witness and then like having that experience of giving birth and being witnessed. Also potent medicine that we need. Oh, beautiful. Right. Oh, I chills again. Like that we need, we need this. So we need to be witnessed. And, and I understand the free birth movement and I'm, I'm all for it because I do believe a hundred percent in the body. I trust in birth, no matter what happens. I completely trust in birth at this point. And I think very, very few people actually do, even if they say they do, but it is something that I learned through my experience. And that being said, I still loved in my personal experience having other women there that were knowledgeable that also trusted in birth and did not doubt my experience and were there just to hold witness to me mm -hmm. and that was that was like very very healing for me in my home birth of my daughter just eight months ago so this is all fresh but so anyway then we then we kind of this is where I'm like I'm not I'm not memorizing any like historical dates or facts here but then we come to where there's like the witches and all of this stuff is very scary and we don't want people, you know, we, women are still in modern times. There are countries where women are not allowed to meet together without a man present. Yeah. Because of the fear, there's this patriarchal fear of our power when we come together because it is so potent. It is so powerful. So then I'm just going to jump to modern science. This man, James Marion Sims, he is still considered the father of modern gynecology. Okay. To this day in medical school, they will teach you that Ma James Marion Sims is the father of modern gynecology. This man performed all of his medical procedures and what we now know is on or not oncology. I'm sorry, gynecology on black women mm -hmm. like, yeah. without any sort of medication or anesthesia for pain relief because they, he did not believe that they experienced the same level of pain as white women. So there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. And to this day, the black maternal rates are still like, oh my gosh, just astronomically higher than anyone else. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a really big deal. And it, there is a lot of people working to solve this and there needs to be a lot more and so with that the the kind of like the witch trials and the the burning of this story medicine almost like if women aren't allowed to meet and circle anymore and women are now trusting men completely with their bodies and not talking to each other anymore not bleeding with each other anymore things like yoni steaming which came from every culture around the world now you go to, you know, say you go to the mall or you go to a store and you're like, hey, what herbs do you use for your yoni steam? Like, what kind of faces do you think you're going to get? <laughs> you're probably going to get kicked out of that place. You're <laughs> like, 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 I don't even cool. know what that is. <laughs> yeah, like most people don't know what that is. But it, it's not just like from one culture. It's from everybody's ancestral background. And that's something that was carried down from from generations of the matriarchal lines like the matriarchy had this wisdom and insight and intuition for how to use these herbs correctly 
to be able to have control and autonomy over women's health. So the women's health was in the hands of the women Mm -hmm. and now it's not. And that's just like the two, that's where the disconnect is (laughs) like that. It's in the hands of men now. And while yes, there are now female doctors, I mean, as long as we are outsourcing our health and our abilities to procreate, to create life, to bleed and cleanse our womb every month, to restart cycles, if all of that is outsourced from the very beginning of us taking a pill like I did when I was 12 years old to regulate my moods as if 12 year olds aren't supposed to be moody <laughs> and figure it out or you know what I mean like so that was what we just coming, coming through for me growing yeah so that's where the disconnect is in my opinion and the medicine is relearning and repassing down to our children and to other people's children you know with consent and consciously how to get back in touch with your intuition, how to get back into your body, how to be emotionally intelligent and not just fight over, are we doing breast milk or are we doing formula? Like, that's not the conversation. That's not the fight. That's not where we need to be putting our energy. It's like personal sovereignty, autonomy, like having choices over our bodies and passing down you know, just like uniting matriarchal forces, because it's not like we're trying to take all the power, stomp all the men like that. That's also not the answer, in my opinion, but to reunite the the balance between masculine and feminine in a way that is not wounded on either side, in a way that is empowered on both sides, empowering men, empowering women, empowering mothers if they choose to be mothers and empowering women if they choose not to be, because we don't need a bunch of women being mothers who don't want to be mothers that yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> there's so much like popping in my brain right now <clears throat> like ugh. I think that so many people forget it's so easy to forget because we're not taught like how modern this stuff is like you just said there are you know we have women doctors now yes we do but that is still I mean, relatively modern like for a long time women were not allowed to be doctors or anything that was considered of power right and for some reason they're still not gynecologists yeah (laughs) why (laughs) but even even a lot of the women that do any job it's still the the position itself the job itself the career itself is still so rooted in this toxic masculine energy of do 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 of this is the rule this is the way it is this is this and that is that this very like black and white energy it's still very disconnected from you from from yourself from your intuition right and from your ability to know your body and know what it needs and know what you need in in those moments of of you know it being pregnant and in giving birth and in just being Mm -hmm. right just being a woman and one thing that you said that really stuck out to me because I was thinking about it the whole time you were talking was about yeah birth control Mm -hmm. and I saw I saw a post and I cannot remember who made the post I remember that Melissa Wells Mel Wells shared it and that's where I saw it was like we've like our generation of women have grown up on on birth control Mm -hmm. basically for hormonal issues for like you said mood swings as though kids aren't supposed to be moody as though we like as though those experiences that we're naturally meant to have were not okay and so we were put on all these different medications and now we have this generation of women who have difficulty getting pregnant if they can get pregnant at all Right. I've women who have like menstrual issues and, and any kind of issues with their, <clears throat> excuse me, with their, you know, with their womb, with, you know, with their uterus, with anything, right? We have this generation of women who struggle with infertility. And pain and not knowing when to rest, not knowing when to slow down. 
And I remember I I switched to a natural birth control. Oh my gosh. Yeah, eight years ago, probably. I would say about eight years ago. And I remember when I stopped because I just I didn't want I didn't want to take the pill anymore. And so I went to my I remember I went to my doctor and this was in my early 20s. And I went to my doctor and I said, I don't I don't want to take the pill anymore. Like I find myself getting really lazy with it. And for me, it, looking back, that was my future me telling that present me, we done. Like this yeah. is not good for us, right? We're done. And so I remember telling her, I don't want to do it anymore. And she said, okay, well, we'll give you the ring, which like, yeah, the new we're ring, 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 ring and you keep it for you, you know, so you don't have to take a pill every day. And me not being, you know, I was not who I am now, <laughs> but then I said, okay. And so I had the ring for a few years and then I, again, future me stepped in and was like, we done. And I, I stopped taking it and I switched to a natural birth control, which is basically just like regulating your body temperature and knowing those fluctuations of your body, the different cycles of your body. And I remember when I went off birth control, I was so, my hormones in my body was so, I, I, just trying to come back to itself, right? But it was so hard. That was a really hard transition because my body had become so reliant on those hormones. And yeah. coming off of them was, it was hard. It was hard to come back to what my body does naturally. Mm. I think that that also speaks to some women in postpartum. And I don't have anything to back this scientifically, but like you've been on hormonal birth control for a number of years. I think that it can affect your postpartum period and yeah. the way with your hormones either regulate quickly or don't and you know postpartum depression postpartum anxiety huge epidemic it yeah. is and a lot of that is i think again my imposter syndrome is like popping up but <laughs> what what i kind of feel about that is a lot of postpartum is because of the society that this culture that we've created around pregnancy and postpartum where you have to listen to everyone around you this disconnection from yourself right this no one's really there yeah you need that support yeah. yeah they just have a lot of stuff to say mm -hmm. and then hold your baby but there's like who's holding the moms right yeah. like that's what the doulas are for like but nobody tells you why like that we, we still don't prioritize that as a society most people don't even know what doulas do until they become pregnant and then like in my experience I didn't even hire one my first pregnancy because I didn't see why I should I was like I've got my mom I've got my this and that like I you know I just didn't understand like what a doula could do for me and I definitely didn't hire one postpartum and so now it's like okay I'm starting to see that we are fundamentally flawed when it comes to how we prioritize birth and postpartum and pregnancy and rites of passages i mean we spend tens of thousands of dollars on weddings but i've still got husbands that come to me and are like i am not giving my wife money to work with you to support her emotionally and i'm like well what is your life without how you make meaning of your life like if you make meaning of it in a negative way and your emotions are always negative and you feel lack of support because as I'm no I'm no longer a doula so I do a lot more now than emotional support but as a doula I, that's where I first started to see like oh there's just a complete lack of emotional intelligence yeah no one is connected to their emotions and most people it takes many times of working with them for over an hour at a time for them to even acknowledge an emotion that they're feeling so how can we listen to our intuition and listen to ourselves and trust ourselves if we don't even know how we feel yeah you know because it's very very toxic masculine and there's like like i said there's a there's a version of masculinity and femininity when working together that i mean come on it makes the world go round like yeah. we need both mm -hmm. we need both there's polarity there is, there is 
we need polarity the duality yeah. and the balance duality, it's yin and yin. it's literally it's everything everything is made up of that but when it comes to like the woundedness this is not me just like bashing the patriarchy and the tear it down you know like i mean i i have respect for that as well at times of the month right <laughs> <laughs> but like it's all it's all seasonal it's all cyclical we're very like yeah 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 and so with that being said when it comes to i forget what i was saying just right before the smash patriarchy but it had to do with toxic masculinity and just yeah the go 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 mentality that you brought up before and like i even struggle with this still as a business owner and especially an online business owner like when to turn it off how to have those boundaries when our apps are designed to keep our attention for as long as possible and as often as possible. And that's where I work. Like yeah. that's, how do I go home? How do I be present with my kids? How do I turn it off? How is it not always productivity, productivity? As soon as I get an idea, I jump on it. As soon as I get like a, like a wave of that, like creativity and Shakti flowing through me, I'm like, oh, let's create. And then, and then someone's like snapping their fingers, trying to get my attention. And I'm like, that, like you know so that's something I'm still struggling with and actually a big win for me that I'm excited to share on this podcast which is also a big win because I've never been on a podcast before oh no this is my first podcast I didn't, I didn't know that yes it is and I'm, it's me. Me. I'm, honored. I'm moving into an office space today oh that's <sighs> exciting oh my heart and boundaries <laughs> yes I feel that I feel that very deeply Mm, like if I'm in my office with my big whiteboard and bulletin board and focus space and turn my phone on focus time like that's my goal it's like let's create a space to work really well and efficiently and like let's prioritize that like yes I'm gonna spend some money on it and do I really want to right now no not really but what about my mental health mm -hmm. because when I'm home with my kids I don't need to be working that's the reason yeah. that like I do what I do is so that I can teach women how to balance this and navigate this within themselves. So I was like, well, then it only makes sense that I create a safe space for me to work and create a safe space for me to live yeah. and create a safe spa space for me to rest so that every time I'm in bed wanting to have an off day and have that time of the month where I'm allowed to rest and recalibrate and rejuvenate and juice up my life, so that I have energy to create this massive work. Like I can do that because I'm home and I'm whoops and I'm not working. And you know, does that make sense? Yeah. That makes yeah. absolute sense. Makes sense. <laughs> makes sense to me. I'm, like, I'm stoked. Yeah. That I think that's so exciting. And I think it's really powerful. And again, it speaks to something that people just don't allow themselves to have because it's it's go 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 it's do 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 it's push through even when you feel you know tired or you're menstruating and you you just want to rest and you're so you're laying in bed and then you're thinking like oh, well my office is just down the hall like I don't really have an excuse to not be working you know whatever bullshit story you tell yourself right, right? because we're all full of them we've all been mm -hmm. programmed yeah. to, to have all these stories and having those two spaces is it's it's so powerful and it's, it sounds like the like the cheesiest thing to say ever but it is because then your and your energy gets to be really directed like mm -hmm. this is where i work and this is where i rest right. yeah very intentional yeah yeah and we need that we need more intentionality about everything i heard one time and I'll never forget this because I remember it was so mind blowing. And it was it, it was about intentionality, right? And the the places that you put your energy. And so it was it was a little like post. Again, I cannot I need to start writing down where I see all these posts. I know. <laughs> but I saw this little this little post message. It was a little video and it was like, where are you giving your energy and how much energy are you putting into things that you don't want to? And the example that they gave. And I'll never forget this example was if you have your desk set up, your space set up, and you have your computer plugged into, you know, your outlet has two holes, right? You've got your computer plugged into one of those outlets, and you've got your phone plugged into another outlet. 
And then you need something, you need to plug something else in. So, you know, you crawl into your desk and you unplug your cell phone charger and you plug in that thing that you need. And then, oh, your phone's dying. So you crawl under the desk and you plug, unplug your computer and you plug in your cell phone charger. Oh, your computer's dying. So you crawl under the desk again and you unplug your computer and you plug in whatever, you know, yeah, whatever. And it's like, how much energy are you giving to that thing? And I was like, oh, my, that was literally me. And yeah, and the, I remember the woman was just like, get what I don't know what they're called one of those big things that has like six in in it like with an extension cord that has the power thing yeah (laughs) yeah and I was like oh my god I give so much energy to this to this shit yeah and just that tiny example I was like yeah mind blown over (laughs) harder not harder (laughs) But we need, we need to be more intentional, right? And that small thing of intentionality is, yeah. is it. Like, I'm not crawling under the desk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that actually makes me think of something because, let me see if I can, like, put this into words. It was kind of like a few different fleeting thoughts that came together. But, like, <laughs> with... <laughs> with I'm very like easily distractible and I have kittens right now and they're just like playing and I'm like hey hold on I'm having thoughts so with the like program that I work in it's called womb to wisdom that's my like the program that I fully work in right now and we talk about the energetic container so there's like the container of the of the program where they're being held and supported and there's like their energetic container that they're working with in their life and there's their energetic container that they're working with in their day And so there's a couple of different thoughts that come to mind because I have a lot of background. Like I was on the route to yoga therapy before this. I have almost a thousand hours of yoga teacher training, hardly taught any, but like was just obsessed with soaking it in and learning and trying to figure out how to integrate some of this stuff into my life. Like if I'm like, I have like 10% of this stuff integrated and I'm like embodying that on a daily basis, like that's beautiful. That's progress. We're like, you know, right. Like we're getting somewhere, learning new things. But then, you know, with doula and cre- and birth work and, you know, all of the things I've learned along the way, like learning about like ancient yogic wisdom or ancient wisdom from other cultures and then like modern science and, and where we're looking energy these days. And then like law of attraction, manifestation, that type of stuff. Honestly, you get varying views because I had a teacher, a yoga teacher that was a monk for 18 years and a nurse as well and she like she was like a I can't remember what type of nurse I think she had a few different roles but she was very like well known in her nursing career she had a lot of a lot of experience I think she was about 70 maybe and she yeah but she was a monk for 18 years and then she was the first person that told me energy is abundant and the way she said it I was like mind blown like she's like you can't run out of energy Like you always have access to the abundance of energy. And then when you, when you start looking in, you know, other areas, I I can't remember, I heard it the other day, who was I listening to? Someone on YouTube, someone that like, I also really look up to, I can't remember his name, but anyway, the, the opinion was not unique to him. A lot of other people think this too, but like of energy being where you can run out and then you fill it back up. And then you run out. It's like the same kind of concept, but it was very like the ways that they are said and taught are very like opposing. Like in, in this one hand, like energy is finite. And on this other hand, energy is infinite. And so when I'm talking about like energetic containers with my clients, it's like the argument isn't whether or not you're going to run out of energy, but like how much energetic load do you have right now? And do you have the capacity for more? Like if you have a full-time job right now, maybe don't do that, like all those other extracurriculars and my online program or like just a bad example. I guess, I mean, it works, but I mean, I could come up with a better one, but in that, <laughs> it's just like so many, there's so many things that we put on our plate. Like I know what I put on my plate. I have a whole lot of motherhood business. Like it's, it's pretty simple. I'm a wife too. So there's that. So like all these people take energy. I'm very empathetic. I can feel all your feels when I'm with you, which I think a lot of people listening to this podcast can relate with, you know, just 
so there's like there's people like us too who it takes a little bit more of a filling up or recharging right to get that energetic load but then there's like ways to kind of hack it you know you can do some breath work you can do some practices you can do a yoga nidra or like legs up the wall pose and yoga 30 minutes of that is equivalent of like four hours of sleep or something like that so there's like ways that you can tap into that abundance and get more but if we're like weaving in that that intentional aspect of like what are we really doing like what's our intention here what's our intention for our day what's our intention from who we are now to who we want to be in four months at the end of this what kind of birth we want to have like yes there is an element of surrendering and learning how to surrender to the process and then there's also the element of learning how much fucking personal power you have Mm -hmm. and how much you actually have control over this experience and how to fucking tap into that so then like the energetic container conversation, I'm like, how I was recording, you know, content for my portal recently and like kind of like adding more to it. And I'm like, the amount of times that I say energy, like I became self-conscious of it. <laughs> it's like, do they get it? Or am I just like regurgitating the energy over and over? <laughs> yeah, that, that makes complete sense. And I love the way that you said that, like energy is abundant. I, I don't know that I've ever heard it put like that. Yeah, it was mind-blowing for me when I heard that. That was Nishala Joy Devi. She's got several books on yoga that are completely like, I mean, the divine feminine is like a big thing right now. A lot of people are like tapping into like the feminine codes and like learning more about how to tap into their feminine essence and things like that. I would say if you're, even if you're not into yoga at all, to to look into her work, Nishala Joy Devi, because she's got The Secret Power of Yoga and she's got another book on yoga that's more on, on like physical aspects of yoga. I think it's like the healing power of yoga or something. And then and then she's got one called the Namaste Effect. It's all about chakras. And I haven't read them all like fully in their entirety, but I, I'm going to at some point because her work is so good. But one of my favorite things is her book, The Secret Power of Yoga which I haven't read fully, but I tap into a lot when I need some divine guidance. I'll like randomly open a page because it is, it is, you know, like a, if you've ever, if it, anyone listening has like a yogic background, there's the yoga sutras and then there's like Patanjali's, what is it? I'm like brain farting, even though this is like my major background. I don't remember either. And I also started in yoga teaching. So. Really? <laughs> what is it like? I guess it would be, let's just say like the yamas and niyamas. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there because that's what the book is actually about. So Patanjali has his version of the yamas and niyamas that was, you know, from a masculine point of view, yoga was not originally created for women. It's very much like created for the masculine body to tap into, to get into the body, to direct energy for them to be able to concentrate in meditation afterward. And as far as like Hatha yoga, major yoga branches like that. But when it comes to like the actual like scripture of like the ancient like writings of yoga, all of it was either written by men or what's the word when they translated by men. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time ever that like, for instance, the Yamas and Niyamas has ever been translated by a woman in a feminine tone with a feminine voice and message. So it's really crazy because like, I, I wish I had it in front of me. I think I'm going to, I think I already brought it to my office last night because I'm going to be using it a lot soon for like kind of an immersive experience of it. But say, for example, like nonviolence it, and it's the, the sutra, I'm like, I'm like going to butcher this right now, but it's fine. Cause you'll get, you'll get the meaning, but like the sutra is to not cause violence, but she's like, okay, if you tell someone not to do something like, what do you think they're thinking about? Yeah. Like, what do you immediately think they're thinking about? So I wish that I had it right in front of me so that I could read her version of it. But she says the sutras in a way that, like, has never been said before, that she just, like, probably channeled when she was a monk. And, oh, my gosh, it's incredible, like, how much the actual, like, teachings change when you meet them from that feminine tone of, like, what to look into what to intentionalize rather than what not to do and you know like what you know the rules of like what how to not do this and how to not do this and please don't do that and it's like what about what should we do it's just like talking with kids like i was just gonna say that it reminds me of talking to a child you're gonna grab that thing yeah (laughs) you told him hands on the table oh okay 
hands are going on the table, you know? So I love that. So her name is Mishala Joy Debbie, and her books are wonderful. If you're looking for more of a like really integrated feminine tone, that's not like all, I don't know, the same voice of like everything. I don't know. I feel like my circles that I, that I am in on like social media and podcasts and stuff, like the stuff that the algorithm sends me, like all is starting to sound the same, but I know not everybody has the same algorithm. Mm -hmm. No, I feel like that too. And sometimes I feel like really biased in the things that I say or the things that I think, because I, you know, I intentionally surround myself with people who are, you know, open and intuitive and connected and, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine, you know, you, you get yourself in that circle and you kind of some forget that it's not everyone is is there yeah but I love that I'm definitely gonna check her out because I'm thinking you know it 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 makes me think of like you're just bypassing the conscious right so when you present things like don't do this don't do that people think about it because or even when you present things as a question mm-hmm. people start to think about it or they hear your question and go I don't want to think about that. Like if you ask someone, are you connected to your body? Someone's like, oh, of course I am. But without actually thinking about it. Right. right? right. And so when you present things in the divine feminine, like this is what this means. This is what this feels like. You bypass that conscious part of your brain into the subconscious. And then your subconscious brain is like, oh, do I actually do that? You know, it's more it's more reflective. Right. And then it becomes more integrated and more connected to your capital s self is what yes i love that i love that yeah so tell us about womb to wisdom tell people how to join where to find you where to learn more about this program because it sounds absolutely amazing sure yeah so how to find me i'll i'll start with first because i love to talk to people like as soon as i can just like let's talk rather than go on like an information overload journey Mm -hmm. uh, about the program because I do like to keep parts of the mystical intact I love the mystery I think it's so important for a journey to be able to unfold and they're bringing in that feminine way again of just like I have the structure I have the masculinity like let's add a little bit of mystery to the mix Mm -hmm. too so I'll like I'll include a lot of details here but as far as like when people find me like, I love to just like see, like have a conversation and just see where our energy's at and then like get on the phone and really like, I want to make sure that I want to work with you as much as you want to work with me and that it's like yeah. a good, good fit and that it's aligned. So, or else, you know, change isn't going to happen. It's not going to be worth it for either of us. <laughs> gives people the opportunity to connect with their intuition again, right? When someone sits exactly. down and has a conversation with you, they're like, yes, I love Victoria's energy. Maybe I don't know all the details, but I feel this, right? I feel this and I know that I need it. Yeah. And before I drop all that, I'll just say like along those same lines, I have someone right now that's been messaging me for like three weeks now over and over again asking questions I can't tell you like we've got had on we've had two phone calls several emails and the only reason I've drawn it out this long is because she's like a good friend's new wife Mm -hmm. and I know that she like based based on what she said I know she'd be a good fit but I don't think she knows really like how to know if it's a yes in herself and like I'm like giving her part of this initiation process if she's gonna take it like let's go I'm gonna like I'm gonna coach you right now like, let's start now. Let's hold you accountable now. But with most people, it's like, if you're going to be asking me this many questions over and over and over and over and over again, like, I want to know, like, does this, is this a full body fuck yes or is it not? Because that's yeah. where you learn to tap into like what you actually need is like, is your body repulsed by this? Or you feel like you should do it because of A, B, and C logic reasons? Or is it like, oh no, take my money. We're starting, honey. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like that's what I that's who I can work with that's like I'm not looking for a, a challenge to change someone from like no yes. one needs to be changed like we are inherently whole let's just come back to that like you want to come back to that I can help you <laughs> so I just I just followed a intuitive hit that made no logical sense along those same lines and changed my Instagram I will just skip all of the boring details of but all of that because it's really it, it could change any day now but the the handle that I'm using now is at Victoria or I am underscore Victoria Jade 
And so I'm gonna, I'm working off of that now. I am underscore Victoria Jade on Instagram. And if you find me there, please send me a message and say hi. And I would love to talk to you if you just like have questions, even if you're not pregnant, if you just want to talk, because all of the content that I make for all of my posts comes directly from conversations that I have with women. I don't like to assume what anyone is needing. I like to know what people are needing and and be inspired from that place or what people are loving or not needing or feeling abundant with and all of those good things. I'm currently not using a website. I'm just using Instagram and my program is Womb to Wisdom. It's currently a four month long container with biweekly coaching calls. So it's a mix between a training portal with like very spiritual and energetic like principles and applying that to birth in a way that is very not mainstream, but you can apply to any birthing person or situation or outcome or place for people to be able to know what physiological birth actually looks like and anyway i know we're, we're wrapping up now i know you have a another podcast to go from but oh that's fine i'll just say all the words as far as where to find me and i'll leave the rest up to mystery <laughs> i love a little mystery a little intrigue yes yeah so the mix between coaching and learning and being able to integrate into your own life and you know, in the physical yeah and again you know you know even in, in listening to this episode, right? If you're listening to this episode and you've made it to the end, if you've made it this far mm -hmm. to hear about this program, right? Yeah. You know. There's, there's a tingle. There's, there's a tingle and maybe you don't, maybe that's a, a new tingle, a new sensation that you've never felt before or maybe it's a full body fuck yes and you recognize it as such, right? Find me, or, girl. <laughs> yeah. Go find Victoria. Go find her on my well, I have I one last question for you. Yes, of course. And that is, I ask all my guests, what does luxuriously fierce mean to you? Yes, I I read this question before you had me on and I thought about it. And right before I entered the call, something finally came up. And I did. I was like, it'll probably just come up while I'm on the call and I'll, or I'll be completely dumbfounded. But it was just basically to not settle like at all in any area of your life to like fiercely live an intentional life where you, like you're not settling like luxury is available and we're fiercely going for it yeah absolutely yeah it's a great name thank you that's what we're here for right tap into your own definition of luxury and fiercely go for it and i think it's a great first up. podcast for me to be on too I'm just like, okay, we're setting, we're setting the scene here with luxuriously fierce. Yeah. Like how aligned is that? I love it. Oh, thank you for being here. I, I mean, I love every conversation that I, that I have on this podcast. I love sitting down with people and connecting. I absolutely love it. Otherwise I wouldn't have a podcast, but like it's conversations like these where I go in completely, you know, blind right not having these kinds of experiences and even like feeling that imposter syndrome like, <laughs> like you know in, in saying things and that having that come up is I love it it's a new edge for me mm, right. right yeah and so I get to you know I get to see that edge and in, meet it and go beyond it right so thank you for giving me a new edge I love that. And I hope that your listeners can feel that too or resonate with it in some way. And, you know, if there's parts that, that are triggering, like really loving, loving those pieces and just meeting them with curiosity. I love just like the Alice in Wonderland curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. If you loved this episode or know someone who would, share it and show some love. Screenshot the episode in the app, share it to your Instagram stories along with your favorite fierce moment from the episode. And don't forget to tag me at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast. You can also subscribe, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram at Luxuriously Fierce Podcast and at Luxuriously Fierce underscore. Thank you for listening to today's episode and don't forget to tune in next week for more things Luxuriously Fierce. The Luxuriously Fierce podcast is sponsored by Goddess Support. 
an oracular online business management company providing you with high level intentional support so you can be the creative and visionary in your business. Goddess support goes the distance that traditional business coaching doesn't. Imagine having a turnkey team of goddesses that have your back with everything from strategy to implementation. That's what's possible with goddess support. We exist to serve the goddess that is you, and we are honored to help fulfill your big vision. Learn more at goddess.support or find us on Instagram at goddess.support.